Hey, what's up? Did you know that you can use the power attack to harvest items with a wrench more quickly? Many people think that because there is no special animation when using the power attack on a harvestable item, that this technique will result in fewer resources. So I ran an experiment to see how things would shake out. According to the blocks.xml file, you have a 25% chance to obtain a battery, a 25% chance to obtain an engine, and a 50% chance to obtain a radiator from a car, but only at the middle level of destruction. I dismantled 32 cars using the left click and 32 cars using the right click. There's a little bit of variability due to RNG or random number generation, but overall these results indicate that there is no disadvantage to resource gain by using the power attack. Power attacks cost more stamina but do significantly more damage, so harvest like a pro and use the power attack. Hey, what's up? Do you know all of the places to look if you need to score some LS- I mean, acid? Acid can be found inside several different loot containers with varying odds. Let's say for the sake of brevity that the chances are slim at best, which means at the most 20% drop rate, but most of the time 5% and often less. The locations in which you can find acid are chemistry piles, sinks, cars, working stiff tools boxes, trash, cardboard boxes, utility carts, and garage boxes. You can also find them at the trader, but only one at a time. This makes Wasteland Treasures Volume 3 one of the most important books in the game. Once read, you'll be able to harvest acid out of cars, army trucks, buses, pill cases, large medical piles, small chemistry piles, and acid barrels. It's important to know that when attempting to wrench a large medical pile, pill case, or small chemistry pile, you will not get a special animation, but don't worry, it's working as long as you've read the book. The salvage operations perk, even when maxed, has no effect on harvesting acid. So trip like a pro and know where to obtain your acid. YouTube's gonna demonetize me, aren't they? Hey, what's up? Did you know that Minor 69er is better than Mother Load? Minor 69er increases tool and block damage, and every time you break an ore node, you get a bonus amount of that resource. So being able to break more blocks and stack up that destruction bonus adds up. Mother Load gives you more resources per block, but there's a hidden disadvantage. It decreases the amount of XP you get from mining by up to 40%. I ran some tests to see how things would shake out. I mined for one minute using a stone axe, iron pickaxe, and steel pickaxe, and I graphed the resources and XP gained with one, three, and five points into Miner 69er and Mother Load each. With the stone axe, resource gain was nearly the same, but XP gain was much higher with Miner 69er. With the iron pickaxe, resource gain was similar but favored Miner 69er, but again, the XP gain was much higher with Miner 69er. With the Steel Pickaxe, resource gain and XP gain were both significantly higher. This data leads me to believe that Miner 69er is superior for both resource and XP gain, and is a more valuable perk at all levels and with all tools. It even gives the added benefit of being able to craft better tools and break all types of blocks in the world more quickly. Additionally, if you read Art of Mining Volume 3, giving plus 10% resource gain from mining when buzzed by coffee brandy, I mean coffee, and eat Rockbusters candy, giving plus 20%, these two modifiers do not compound with the resource gain given from mother load. Each modifier is calculated from base resource gain, then added together, further hindering its usefulness. So mine like a pro and max out Miner 69er before you take points into mother load. Hey, what's up? Do you want to make some money? Everyone knows that selling crap to the trader is how you make money, but I have a couple of tips on how to squeeze them for even more dukes. Use spare resources to craft mods. A mod placed on quality 6 padded armor will increase the value more than the same mod placed onto quality 1 steel armor. Always put extra mods onto your highest quality items and make sure to repair them before selling. You can craft a ton of items which you can then sell to the trader. Two that I would like to point out are reinforced drawbridges and and robotic turret ammo. Drawbridges require the schematic to craft, but are relatively cheap to make and sell for 5,520 dukes apiece. Robotic turret ammo can be crafted in your inventory starting day one, allowing you to turn 15 iron into nine dukes. Perhaps the quickest way to make some dukes is to grab your lucky wrench and dismantle everything you see. Cars are loaded with materials that you can sell. Scrap the pipes down into iron two and craft it all into robotic turret ammo. Scrap the radiators down to brass, 
Raw brass from doorknobs, candlesticks, radiators, and trophies sell for more than the items themselves. Sell the rest directly to the trader. I broke down 20 cars and made an average of 260 dukes per vehicle. When I took 3 points into salvage operations, it shot up to 430 per vehicle. With 5 points in salvage operations and 5 points in better barter, I got 646 per vehicle. The very best way that you can make money is to take points into better barter, giving plus 5% profits per level up to 25%. Wear a cigar for plus 10% bartering, use Grandpa's Awesome Sauce for plus 20% bartering, and Sugar Butts for another extra 10% on top of that. Hold a 44 Magnum or Desert Vulture if you've read Magnum Enforcer Volume 4 for yet another plus 5%. And don't forget your nerdy glasses for a sweet XP boost and enjoy up to 70% better profits from selling. So swindle like a pro and know how to earn some money. If I had a duke for every time someone was just looking, I'd be as rich as Trader Joel. Hey, what's up? Did you know that it's possible to nuke the trader? All you need is a keyboard, mouse, and PC. What's that? You're a console player. Aww. Head into the game files located at 7 days to die data prefabs POIs. Choose your least favorite trader and open that XML file in Notepad. Find this line and change true to false. Save the file and overwrite, but it's always good practice to make a backup before doing this. At this time, if you were to make a new map, trader protections would be deactivated for all traders that you changed the files for. If you have an existing save, load up and go to that trader's compound. The protections will still be active. Open the console with F1 and type chunk reset while you are within the trader area. This will replace the POI with a new one that has the protections turned off. You'll even get an extra trader and things might be glitchy, but you can fix all of this by exiting the game and loading back in. And now you can show Trader Wrecked the love he truly deserves. Hey, what's up? Did you know that you can access extra inventory at the traders using Better Barter and Nerdy Glasses? Better Barter gives you plus 5% profits at each level, but at level 3, you unlock a new secret stash, which will be entirely different from the secret stash you see at level 2. Similarly, the level 4 secret stash is completely different from the level 3, and the level 5 secret stash is different from the level 4. If you wear nerdy glasses for the plus 1 intellect, and you meet the minimum requirement for level 3, 4, or 5 of Better Barter, you can then use an exploit to access two sets of secret stash inventories every time you go to the trader. All you need to do to start off is wear your nerdy glasses and have four points into intellect. The nerdy glasses will make it possible to unlock better barter level three. Once unlocked, the secret stash will change, but you can then remove your nerdy glasses, deducting one intellect point and deactivating level three better barter and reverting you back to the base secret stash. This trick also applies to better barter level four and five, so you can use it a total of three times as you rank up in intellect. It's basically like having two traders in one. So barter like a pro and use the secret stash trick. Hey, what's up? Do you know how to get forged steel? Forged steel is necessary to craft cool stuff, but it can be a pain in the ass to find, and don't even get me started on the crucible, which allows you to craft your own steel out of forges. Forged steel can be harvested using a wrench, ratchet, or impact driver from gun safes, vending machines, ATM machines, transformers, munitions boxes, hardened chests, chandelier lights, and street lights. There is a chance to loot steel from workbenches, forges, rolling toolboxes, working stiff tools boxes, Z packs, and construction crates. At loot stage 118 and above, you will have a chance to to find 100 forged steel in airdrops. Finally, you can purchase it from the traders if available, and 100 steel can sometimes be selected as a reward for completing a quest tier. The more traders you know, the better your chances. The crucible can sometimes be found in the trader's regular inventory, but there will be an additional possibility in the secret stash at Better Barter level 3, and chances will increase at Better Barter level 4 and 5. They can sometimes sell this schematic as well. Crucibles can be found in loot, but they are a tier 2 loot item and so are locked until you reach loot stage 80. The only two places you can loot them are working stiff tools boxes and forges. At all levels, you have a 5% chance to find the crucible schematic in a hidden stash or construction crate. At loot stage 80 or above, you may find the schematic in the vast amount of containers that can contain a schematic such as bookshelves, garbage, filing cabinets, mailboxes, cracker book boxes, z-packs, and chests, just to name a few. The schematic could be an option as a quest reward for a tier 3 job or above, but only after this loot stage. 
The only other way is to max out intellect and advanced engineering, which will automatically unlock the crucible for crafting. Ain't nobody got time for that, so craft like a pro and know where to steal your steel. Hey, what's up? Did you know that you can ride a bicycle without using stamina, ride the gyrocopter without burning fuel, and ride a motorcycle up the side of a building? If you're riding a bicycle, you usually hold W to pedal forward and hold shift when you want to sprint, but that burns through stamina fast. To fix this, hold down shift instead and only hold W when you want to sprint. By pulsing the W button every few seconds, you can find a rhythm where you can ride at sprinting speed without consuming your stamina. In the gyrocopter, all you need to do is get airborne. <laughs> Easier said than done, I know, but once you're on a straight flight path, make sure you're holding shift and W for maximum speed. Now just press and hold the pitch up and down buttons at the same time. By default, this would be C and spacebar. You should hear the gyrocopter motor idle down, but you'll maintain max speed and consume basically no fuel. If you're a fan of packing it without wrapping it, you'll love this one. To perform this frisky maneuver, drive up to a wall with your motorcycle and start mashing on the C button. Embrace the carpal tunnel syndrome and you'll pop the sickest wheelie you've ever seen and ride it straight up the face of the wall. Just beware that what comes up must come down and I won't accept liability for the consequences. So travel like a pro and know how to cheese your ride. Hey, what's up? Are you struggling to find a beaker? Beakers became more scarce in Alpha 20, creating a new bottleneck for players wishing to craft a chemistry station. They're so rare, it'll make your head spin. At this time, there are only four ways to get a beaker. You can select one as a quest reward, you can loot one from a chemistry pile, pop and pills box, end of dungeon loot, or broken chemistry station. You can find them in certain airdrops, and you can buy them from the traders. Beakers belong to the rare medicine group, along with nine other items seen here. Each trader carries one rare medicine. Each trader also carries one to two regular medicine. Anything in the rare medicine group can also spawn within the regular medicine group along with these other six items. So that's two to three low probabilities of a trader inventory spawning a beaker every three days. However, Trader Gen has the goods. Not those goods, these goods. She carries three rare medicine and three to seven regular medicine, meaning that you can get up to seven additional rolls to get a beaker. I checked Trader Gen's inventory 50 times and I was able to find at least one beaker on 11 occasions, about one in every five resets or 15 in-game days. So don't be like Jesse, be like Mr. White and know how to start your lab. Hey, what's up? Do you know how to avoid screamers? Screamers spawn based on a game mechanic called heat. When the meter hits 100%, a screamer spawns and the meter resets to zero. Mm -hmm. Some things generate heat passively like torches, campfires, and forges. But you can actively generate heat with gunfire or whenever you break certain blocks, particularly when you're mining. Metals are loud and generate 0.1% per strike and an additional 2.84% when broken. Ores like stone, nitrate, coal, and oil shale are more forgiving with only 0.5% heat per block broken. You can look at the attacks per minute stat of your tool to get an idea of how much heat you can generate per minute. The auger with its high strike rate but low damage will generate more heat than a steel pickaxe when mining metal due to the per strike heat generation. So how do we avoid this? Sneaking. Sneaking while mining magically reduces the amount of heat generated. With metal, you generate about 35% less heat both on strike and on destroy. With other ores, it's even better. 50% less heat per block destroyed. This works with all tools, even the auger, but the auger generates 1% heat every time you click the left mouse button. So hold it down as much as you can to prevent pulsing up the heat. Screamers can be a huge pain to deal with, but this might be the knowledge you need in order to avoid them altogether. So mine like a pro and sneak while you're mining. Hey, what's up? Have you ever wanted to work at a circus? Me neither, but if you did, I can imagine that one of the tricks you'd want to know is how to ride a bicycle backwards. In 7 Days to Die, you can ride backwards by holding S. If you turn the camera around and hold shift, you'll start cruising at high speed without using any stamina. I set up an experiment to see if it was any good. I pedaled for 20 seconds going forwards, backwards, sprinting, and using the shift W trick and marked my progress at the end. I then put a tape measure up to my monitor and did some guesstimating because... Trust me. 
I'm a doctor. My results indicate that pedaling backwards is 30% faster than pedaling forwards. The shift W trick is 60% faster and sprinting is 90% faster. The real benefit to this is that it will not harm you if you have a broken leg and sprinting will. So cycle like a pro and pedal forwards using the shift W trick and backwards when you have a broken leg. Hey, what's up? Have you ever wondered whether light armor or heavy armor is better? Points taken into armor perks decrease the respective armor type's mobility and stamina penalty. They also allow you to craft higher quality armor and increase armor durability. There is no effect on armor rating, explosion resistance, critical injury resistance, or noise. Base stamina is 10 per second. Base mobility is 100%. Padded armor has no mobility or stamina penalty, so light armor points only affect crafting and durability. Leather and military armor share the same stamina and mobility penalty. All heavy armor also has the same stamina and mobility penalty, meaning heavy armor perks have the same effect no matter what piece you are wearing. Let's compare quality 6 steel armor to quality 6 military armor with maxed out perks since these are the armors you would strive toward in the game. The military armor offered an armor rating of 58, which means 58% of incoming damage would be deflected by the armor. Mobility was reduced by 6%, and stamina was reduced by 21%. The steel armor offered an armor rating of 76. Mobility was reduced by 23%, and stamina was reduced by 51%. So to summarize, light armor offers 18% less damage resistance, but gives 17% better mobility and 30% better stamina regeneration. Light armor also produces 10% less noise, has less explosion resistance, less durability, and marginally less critical injury resistance. Each point of encumbrance results in a loss of about 2.5% mobility, so one way of looking at it is that while wearing a full set of heavy armor, it would feel as though you are encumbered by 7 compared to wearing light armor. But an analysis of armor wouldn't be complete without discussing the book that changes everything. Urban Combat Volume 6 is a book that removes the mobility penalty from armor when in combat for 20 seconds, delivering much needed movement speed when you need it the most. Heavy and light armor each cater to a certain playstyle, so choose wisely and know the pros and cons of each. Hey, what's up? Do you enjoy freshly cooked meals? Well, that's unfortunate because farming has become considerably more challenging in Alpha 20. Seeds can be found in a variety of containers since they can be found in the junk loot subgroup, but they are most common in vegetable stands at a 75% chance. You can turn five crops into a seed if you have the recipe or have the appropriate level of living off the land. You can obtain them from farm bundles, granting you three seeds, Bundle 1 contains mushroom, yucca, cotton, goldenrod, chrysanthemum, or coffee seeds. Bundle 2 contains potato, corn, aloe, or blueberry seeds. And Bundle 3 always contains pumpkin, hop, and supercorn seeds. You can allegedly buy them from the trader as well, with Trader Rect giving you the highest chance. At least that's what the XML file says, but in extensive testing, he usually doesn't have any. He's probably eating them. Just get the fuck out of here! Seeds can be planted in a farm and harvested for two crops. All crops take a little bit less than two days to grow, and all crops are two blocks tall except corn, which is three blocks tall. If you put a roof over your garden, make sure it allows light inside. Light can pass through glass and bars and can span a distance of seven blocks in each direction. For the rest of the video, we're going to use something called the Law of Averages to find out how to make farming sustainable. With no points in living off the land, you'll get two crops per plant. 10 plants will yield 20 crops and five seeds. You'll turn 25 crops into five seeds, leaving you net negative with negative one seeds. You'll have the crops for cooking, but no way to expand your farm. Living off the land level one doubles your harvest. 10 plants will yield 40 crops and five seeds. You'll turn 25 crops into five seeds, leaving you net positive with 15 extra crops. At living off the land level two, you'll get a 50% chance of an extra crop per harvest. 10 plants will yield 45 crops and five seeds. You'll turn 25 crops into five seeds, leaving you net positive with 20 extra crops. Living off the land level three triples your harvest. 10 plants will yield 65 crops and five seeds. You'll turn 25 crops into five seeds, leaving you net positive with 40 extra crops. What's the takeaway here? Without points in living off the land, farming is only for planting seeds that you find or buy and harvesting those plants for crops to then be used in recipes. Seed creation is unsustainable. As you level up in living off the land, farming becomes increasingly profitable with a minimum of one point being required to create a sustainable growing farm model, assuming the law of averages. So farm like a pro and live off the land. Now I gotta clean all this shit up.
Hey everyone, my name is Tim Ricky, and I just wanted to say thank you for watching, for leaving a like, but most of all, thank you to the long list of amazing supporters that you see here. I hope this episode has earned your subscription, and I can't wait to show you the next one. Best wishes to all, and goodbye.